So for our cube steak, the first thing we're going to do is brown them because on the website, which I'll have linked in the comment box below where, they, where I found this recipe, the author said that she made them the first time and they stuck together. So then she decided to brown them on both sides the next time and they didn't stick. So I'm browning them first, I'm slicing up my onion and then we're going to get everything put into the pot. And to make sure mine didn't stick together, I put two on the bottom and then I put some onions on top of those so it would separate them from the next two cube sticks. And then I put the rest of the onions in and all the other ingredients, which I'll have listed at the end of this clip and in uh, the, well, you'll have a link to the original recipe in the description box below. This cooks for six hours on low. It was absolutely delicious. We had ours with some Brussels sprouts and mac and cheese. The gravy was fantastic. The cube steaks were tender. I highly recommend. Now moving to chicken alfredo. This was such a simple dinner. I did miss filming a lot of the important parts about me putting things in, but I was not going to not share this because it was an easy dinner with fantastic flavor. So let me start by saying you're gonna need some cooked and cubed chicken breast. I just salted, well actually I used the Kinder's blend, salt, pepper, garlic with some oil. I covered this on the pan and put it in a 350 degree oven and it was uh, to temperature in about 20 minutes, 165. You could use rotisserie or any other kind of cooked chicken, even canned chicken. This sauce is amazing. So we have our butter in here. We're gonna, we melted that. We're gonna add in our heavy whipping cream, which I did manage to film that part. Then we're just gonna stir this to combine. I'll do that for about six minutes. And then after this thickens up some, we're gonna add our Parmesan cheese. I did miss putting that in, but it goes here to now it's in here and I'm just breaking up the little um, crumbles and getting that incorporated. We're gonna cook this for about four minutes, medium heat. I'm just adding some pepper here. I'll have your ingredients at the end here so you know how much to use of everything. And then after this four minutes is up, it's nice and thickened, we put in our noodles and our chicken, which unfortunately, I forgot to turn the camera on, but as you can see, clearly it's in here. And then I dished that up and seasoned it with some parsley. Like I said, the flavor of this Alfredo sauce, I don't think I'll ever go back to a jar. This meal was fantastic. Big Daddy said we can have this every week, once a week. So I think you really liked it. The first thing you are really supposed to do here is fry your bacon up until it's crisp and then set it aside and you use your bacon grease to put in the rice 
when you're cooking it. You put it in the water to cook the rice. I use real bacon bits. I have grease, uh, bacon grease sitting around. Uh, so I just use a tablespoon or two of that and use my bacon bits. So I skip the bacon step. I have the directions typed out in the description box below. This came from a church cookbook and I have the ingredients down there also. I did sway a little with the ingredients. It said a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which I'm pretty sure I used probably two tablespoons, but anyway, we'll walk through this together. So next, I've got the rice in the microwave cooking, or if you do it on the stove, whichever way you do it. Here I am sprinkling the one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and as you can well see, I wanted my marinated quite well. And then I have my half cup flour ready to dredge the shrimp in after they sit and marinate for a while. Next thing we're going to do is add a butter to our pot or a pan and we're going to add in the onion and green pepper that I chopped up. We're going to cook that until it softens. While the veggies were softening, I was dredging the shrimp and the flour, and now I'm going to add those to our pan with a little extra butter. They wouldn't all fit in my pan, and you'll see in a little while, I add a second smaller fry pan to the stove so that I can cook the second round a little faster to speed it up. Depends on how hungry you are. <laughs> Well, now that all the shrimp is cooked through in the first pan, I'm going to go ahead and start adding the uh, rice to it. And I've got the other shrimp cooking, as you see in the other fry pan, and everything comes together at the same time. So that worked out. Another option would be to use a much bigger frying pan, or maybe an electric skillet would work well. I know mine is a lot larger than these frying pans, but I didn't think to use it. But there's an option. added a little more butter here as you say you just do that by you know seeing how dry it's getting and my rice was drying out so that's why I added it if yours does that add more butter if not just stick with what you started with I'm turning over the other pan of shrimp it's almost done Now we're adding the bacon bits, or if you do your, your cooked bacon, just crumble it up, put that in there. Mix everything together and it is ready to go. Here's what the uh, fry pan looked like, and then I'll show you our plated uh, dishes. We have, I think Big Daddy used a little Worcestershire sauce on top of his. I put a little soy sauce on top of mine, whatever you like. Both went well. I hope you give this one a try. It is really, really good.
For this slow cooker meal, we're going to have two bowls that we're going to go ahead and prep before we start loading up the crock pot. So in this bowl, we're going to put in our sour cream, cream of chicken soup, pepper, Italian seasoning, and paprika. And then we'll stir everything. In our next bowl, which I use a measuring cup, you melt the butter and then you add the Ritz crackers and mix everything to combine the two. This recipe called for three chicken breasts. I always use two. I butterfly them, that way I have four. And then I decided to slice these again, sort of make them into chicken tenders. We're gonna put the chicken in first. And after we do that, we're going to put our soup mixture on top of the chicken and then we're going to sprinkle that with the crackers. I use crock pot liners, uh, personal preference. I know not everybody likes to use them, but I got these off of Amazon, I think it was last year, and they were at that time $11.99. Right now they're $14.79, but this is a box of 30 liners, and I really haven't even made a dent. So if you want to get those, I have them linked down in the uh, description box with all my other Amazon items, and I put them at the top of the list so they'll be easy for you to find. The last thing we're doing here is sprinkling the top of the dish with some ranch seasoning. Now I didn't have regular ranch seasoning, I used the Flavor God's Ranch. And then you put the lid on, you have two options here. You can cook it on low for six to seven hours or high four to five. We served ours with a salad and some buttered bread. It was absolutely delicious, very, very flavorful. <laughs> I can't speak, flavorful. And I hope you give it a try. I hope you enjoyed this week's Menu Monday. If you made it to the end, please leave me a shrimp emoji in the comments. Love y'all.